Okay, so today we are going to start our notes on cell reproduction, and that's going to start with the process of mitosis. So there's going to be two sections that we're going to work on. We're going to work on the mitosis section first, have a quiz on that, and then we're going to work on meiosis, and then you're going to have your quiz, or excuse me, your test um, on that on March, well, hopefully March 2nd, but we'll see where we go with it. So I'm going to share my screen. Of course, you should have um, spent at least five minutes with a mitosis quizlet um, today if you're not in school. And then we're going to open up in your Google Classroom. Um, you're going to see the guided notes for cell reproduction. So you're going to go ahead and open that up. And when you do, we're going to go to slide two. And we're going to start off talking about prokaryote reproduction or prokaryote DNA. So in prokaryotes, the chromosomes are simpler. DNA in prokaryotes consist of one circular chromosome that's attached to the cell membrane. Prokaryote cell, prokaryotic cells do not have a nucleus that contains their DNA. Remember, there's no nucleus, no membrane-bound organelles. We pretty much have free flowing nucleus in there and it is a single loop as you're seeing here. In prokaryote or excuse me in eukaryotes we have a nucleus we have membrane bound structures and that DNA is going to be located inside that nucleus on chromosomes. So when we talk about cell division in prokaryotes we're going to talk about something called binary fission. So prokaryotes reproduce through a process called binary fission. The DNA is copied and results in two identical chromosomes. A new cell membrane begins to develop between the two DNA copies and binary fusion can occur as fast as 35 minutes to 11 hours. So sometimes when you see um, bacterial cells divide, um, it happens very, very quickly uh, in most cases. So here we've got that DNA now you see here we've had it duplicate so there's a lot more in there the cell begins to divide by pinching together and we get two separate what we call daughter cells you're going to hear that term daughter cells quite a bit in the next few units chromosomes are rod-shaped structures made of dna and protein the dna strand is tightly coiled around a chunk of protein called a histone Histones maintain the shape of the chromosome and help tightly pack the DNA. A chromatid is an identical half that forms as DNA makes a copy of itself before the cell divides. So you've got some new terms in here. Um, you're going to see these in your vocab, but you need to know what they are. So here we're seeing the chromosome, and if we take a closer look, we see that it's all coiled in what we call supercoils. As we break it down, we get these, we see that like there's kind of this whole chunk that's together. And so these are your nucleosomes. And if we break what's in those nucleosomes down even further, they have these little tightly packed DNA uh, things called histones here. And those histones can then be broken down into that double helix of DNA. So two chromatids of a chromosome are attached at a point called a centromere. So this is going to be your chromatids here, and they're attached here at the centromere. The centromere holds the chromosomes together until they separate during cell division. In between cell division, parts of the chromosomes uncoil so they can be read and used to direct the activities of the cell. This uncoiled DNA is called chromatin. So once this starts to, to uncoil, we've got what's called chromatin, okay? Um, this seems complicated now, but we're gonna be doing a lot with this. So just um, kind of bear with me. Animal chromosomes are organized by size into sex chromosomes and autosomes. Sex chromosomes determine the sex of the organisms, and they may carry other characteristics as well. 
animals such as you have two sex chromosomes. The sex chromosome can either be X or Y. You inherit one from each parent. XX is a typical female and XY is a typical male. So you can see here, we have 22 pair of chromosomes and then we've got either the XX or the XY. All of the other chromosomes are called autosomes. So in here, these 22, and if we split them apart, we have 44 autosomes for humans. And then your sex chromosomes, making 46 total. Every sexually reproducing organism has two copies of each autosome, one from each parent. The two copies of each autosome is called a homologous chromosome pair or homologs. Typical humans have 46 total chromosomes, the 44 autosomes and the two sex chromosomes. The picture is of a karyotype, a pictomicrograph of the chromosomes in a normally dividing human cell. And when we get into mutations and things like that, you're gonna see that sometimes we can have extra chromosomes, even on the XX, XY combinations. But this is a general karyotype of the chromosomes. We also need to understand the difference between having diploid versus haploid cells. So somatic cells are also known as body cells. You need to know that both of those terms mean the same thing because you will see it listed both ways on your test and on your state test. It can happen that they use either term. So somatic cells or body cells are cells that have two homologous chromosomes and are called diploid. The dye in diploid meaning two. Every cell in your body except sperm and egg cells are diploid. We also refer to this as a 2N, so two standing for diploid. Your examples of this would be your skin cells, your blood cells, your muscle cells. Cells that have one copy of chromosomes are called haploid, as in they have half. The sperm and the egg are haploid. They are called gametes. And when we get into uh, more with genetics and stuff, uh, we're going to be talking in deeper detail of these gametes, and especially in meiosis. So here you can see that this would be the karyotype for uh, your normal, uh, typical uh, male. And then if we were looking at just the sperm or the egg, we're going to have these haploids. So you can see it's just half of these pairs. There are two types of cell division in eukaryotes, and both are examples of asexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction is the production of offspring from one parent. So in mitosis, you need to kind of think of those parent cells um, as uh, kind of dividing on their own as being their own parent. So in mitosis, when we have uh, this happening, it is for growth, repair, development and it's asexual reproduction. It happens uh, in every cell that you have. Meiosis takes that, that concept of mitosis one step further, and this is how we form our gametes or our sex cells, the sperm and the egg. So you can see mitosis here, it's gonna result in a, a diploid cell, whereas in meiosis, we're gonna end up with haploid cells. So in the cell cycle, we have the sequence of growth and division. It consists of two major phases, interphase, and then either mitosis or meiosis. Cells spend most of their time in interphase. It's about 95% of the time. And that's when we really don't have a whole lot of stuff going on with the cell. Interphase consists of three phases. G1, which is called gap one, is just where the cell is growing. So there's not much going on. There's no major thing. It's just getting bigger. Then we have the S phase, which we have DNA being synthesized. 
So think of the word synthesis and know that that is the S. So this is when we have um, kind of that, that DNA becoming more prevalent, uh, being able to be seen. G2, gap two, the cell is gonna prepare for division. So cells can also enter a G0 phase where they exit the cell cycle and do not copy their DNA or prepare for cell division. Most cells in the human body are in G0. So here is a visual. You will see this visual on your quiz. You will see this visual on your test. So we have this daughter cell. We're seeing interphase here is the biggest phase because this is where your cell is most of the time. In G1, we have the cell maturing and growing. In this DNA synthesis, we have the copying of that DNA. And then G2, the cells are preparing for division. Then they go into mitosis, where we have all these phases here before it goes back into that G1 phase or, or becomes an identical cell because we're gonna have that division. And then both of those cells will go through this process. So in the cell cycle, our first phase is interphase. This is the time between cell divisions. The DNA is copied and centrioles duplicate in preparation for mitosis. It's a time of rapid growth and metabolic activity. Remember, interphase is not a part of mitosis. It is a part of the cell cycle. In interphase, the nucleolus is still visible. So the majority of these cells here is in, they're in interphase and you can see that nucleolus, that little dark spot in almost every one of these cells, okay? So you have your nucleolus, that dark spot. You have the nucleus, which is this bigger colored spot and you have that DNA in there. And in some of these, you can see that DNA inside of it. Then you have that nuclear envelope on the outside so the nucleolus and the nuclear envelope are distinct and the chromosomes are in the form of a thread-like chromatin. So that's what we call that thread-like DNA. In mitosis, um, we have the first phase called prophase. This is the longest and the first phase. Nucleus and the nucleolus disappear. The centrioles migrate to opposite ends of the cell. Spindle fibers form microtubules that radiate from the centrosomes. The DNA is going to coil into rod-shaped chromosomes. And prophase is gonna look grainy. So this is an example of what prophase would look like under the microscope. The nucleolus disappears, the chromatin condenses into chromosomes. So these um, Centrosomes here, we're gonna get into more detail with how they help with um, getting into like metaphase that they're showing, but they're just gonna start moving to opposite ends of the cell. And then we have the formation of the meiotic spindle or what we call the spindle fibers. And those are these hair-like things that are coming out of those centrosomes. And I'm sorry, there's a couple um, misspellings over here. In metaphase, this is the shortest phase. It's also the easiest one to identify under the microscope. The spindle fibers are gonna to attach to the centromeres and the chromosomes are gonna line up on the equator and are held in place by the kinetic core fibers. Metaphase, think middle. They're gonna be in the middle of the cell and they're gonna line up. Somebody uh, last year said that kind of looks like stitches if you've ever had stitches. So these are lined up at the center you can kind of see in this picture those spindle fibers that are pulling at it and your centromeres are gonna be, or excuse me, your centrosomes are gonna be on the opposite ends. So here in this graphic, you see that they are hooked here and we've got the fibers hooking to those uh, equators, okay? And they're gonna be pulled apart. So they're attaching to the centromeres. In anaphase, you're gonna start seeing the centromere split and the chromosomes are gonna move apart. Each chromatid is now a separate chromosome. 
So here is where you see anaphase that's gone from that middle. They are now separating into those two separate um, areas. So here again, you see how it's hooked to that centromere and those spindle fibers are pulling them away. In telophase, this is the last phase. After the chromosomes reach opposite poles, the spindle fibers disassemble. So those little fibers start to go away. We have something called cytokinesis occurring. Sometimes you'll see telophase as kind of being this part where they're, they're in their own little area and then cytokinesis, this pinching or cleaving off of the cell as a separate phase. And you're gonna see that on our worksheet as well. The chromosomes are gonna unwind, the spindle breaks down and the nucleus and nucleolus reform. So over here, you're seeing that occur kind of right here and right here. You've got that, you can see that separation, that cytokinesis occurring in this one, it's almost split into two already. In plants, a cell plate is going to form in the middle of the dividing cell. And in animals, you're going to see that cell membrane pinching off and eventually separating. Okay, so that's where we're going to stop today. The next thing we're going to do is um, the mitosis worksheet. So if you open that up in your classwork section, you need to put these pictures in order, okay? And so we've got six phases and I want you to start with interphase, okay? So you're gonna start with interphase and I'll tell you right now, that's gonna be letter D. So we're gonna put a D on the line. We're going to write interphase and using your notes, you're gonna to describe to me what is happening. Actually, I'm gonna double check my key because I wanna make sure I'm giving you the right, um, the right one to start with since they're so close. One second. Okay, yes. Okay, I do want you to start with D. So I just wanted to make sure that you knew that was interphase. Um, all right, so we're gonna go through, you're gonna have all those phases all the way down. And then we are going to, um, give me one second. We are going to actually go over this worksheet on Friday. So you're gonna get what you can done. If it's all of it, great, because it's just these six. And, um, and then you're also going to end this where it's going back into interphase. So there's another picture you can use for interphase, but I'm telling you to use D, interphase, describe for the first one.